Hey guys, what's up? Fresh perspective. This is a different room in the house, so never, never done it from this room. Um, I, I have a question. Uh, it wasn't really a question. It was more of like a guy's uh, outpouring, and he's a, he's a young guy, and he said that um, he's been he's been developing for a few months, and uh, and he started getting into some Python, and uh, but basically he thinks that he has a beginner syntax down, so he knows how to do some basic you know Python basic stuff. Uh, but his concern is that like he's trying to read about programming theory, uh, programming algorithms, and uh, just feels like he, he doesn't get a grasp of it and that he's never going to be able to, to, to succeed, I, I suppose, because he feels like he's just not getting it. Like he doesn't, uh, he was saying, and it, and it is a long spiel, he sent it to me on, uh, on Facebook, and uh, I would share it with you guys if I didn't have my camera on me. Uh, but anyway, I'm just kind of going off of memory also what he said, but it was, it was, it was basically, it was, a, it was a new developer who was questioning whether or not he was in the right career because he did not see himself being in a position to be able to apply some of the uh, architectural patterns or even uh, better than that, being able to come up with some of those himself. So basically, he's looking at some of the smartest people in the industry and then trying to compare himself, uh, which is a terrible thing to do. Nobody should ever do that. I can tell you the vast majority of programmers that I've worked with are just typical people. Just, you know, your normal people, uh, you know, they're, they're not geniuses and things like that. It doesn't, it, it doesn't take a level of genius to be able to do what we do. Uh, it does take a decent amount of smarts, though. Some people may not have the capabilities uh, uh, to be able to do this. So I'm not trying to go out there and claim that everybody can be a programmer. Um, sometimes that kind of rubs me the wrong way, where it's like, hey, you can't find a job. Why don't you go to something and you can be a coder and all this stuff? And it's like, oh, you could get a job at Burger King, but you're going to be a great coder. You know, it's like... Let's be let's be respectful of the industry. You know what I mean? We're not a bunch of fucking idiots, right? I mean, we 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 are all experienced professionals making a lot of money because not a lot of, well a lot of people can do this, but not everybody can do it. And there's a there's a there's a huge demand for people that can do it. So if you can do it, um, and, and this is like you know whether or not you choose to do it, because a lot of this whether or not you can or can't is going to come down to whether or not you really want to or not. Um, but with this guy though, he. He's concerned about, okay, I read about, like, um, okay, there, John Carmack, uh, the creator of Doom, uh, Wolfenstein, Wolfenstein 3D, like, uh, hugely successful guy, great programmer, one of the best probably to ever exist. Uh, college dropout, by the way, never went to college, also had some legal trouble growing up and everything. Um, but, you know, ridiculously smart guy. He, he's the kind of guy that you don't want to com compare yourself to. So, like, when you're looking at... Uh, and, and honestly, I can't think of the algorithm. But the other day, I stumbled upon it. But in Quake Three, if you look it up in Quake Three, uh, there is this algorithm that that just kind of boggles developers' minds. Like they, uh, it's some sort of reverse something or another. And, and honestly, I, I'm doing a terrible job of explaining it. But basically, if you look up uh, Quake Three or John Carmack, and um, you can look up that art, that algorithm uh, that, that he actually created, and, and it was something that like, like for him to be able to discover that he was trying to solve a specific problem number one but number two we shouldn't try to compare ourselves to some of the best and the brightest in this industry like I mean if you're in physics you shouldn't compare yourself to Albert Einstein so many people do I've actually read about so many people that are going to grad school and they want to develop the next best thing and, and, and they're more focused on being uh, the next Albert Einstein than to, tr to really try to advance the field it seems like uh, at least that's just my kind of far away type of uh, of a uh, uh, of, uh, a viewpoint uh, and, and we do it in development as well man that's why we have so many different frameworks and everything that's why I have my own framework it's almost like it's the status quo uh, to, to kind of reinvent the wheel and uh, and try to show how, how valuable you are and how much you know and everything and, and the only way to do that is by uh, kind of reinventing the wheel because we're really not that creative we're not all John Carmack um, we're not going to come up with some sort of and if you look at that algorithm from doing from uh, from Quake 3 You'll know what I'm talking about. It's like the typical shit that most people are not going to understand. Um, but, but we also, you know, we weren't coding from, from, you know, eight years old or whatever John Carmack was when he started. So I guess my point is that it can be detrimental to your growth to try to compare yourselves to people uh, that have been in the industry longer that, and in, in many cases, you know, are probably going to be more capable of doing you know, amazing things than, 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 than uh, you know, when it comes to like algorithms and things like that. Doesn't necessarily mean that you can't be like a good business guy, a good programmer, make $150,000 a year, you know, in New York City or something like that. I mean, none of that stuff is, is gonna prevent you from, from doing that. But 
uh, if you want to give up programming because you don't understand how to, um, or you don't feel like you're going to be capable of doing things like, you know, like I, I'm just going to keep going with the same example, John Carmack, uh, then, then I think it's a really bad reason probably to give up programming uh, or even to be worried about your career. Uh, th there's going to be theory and, and, and things that, that, we, that we deal with day in and day out from like whether it's cryptography or things like that, that we're just simply not going to understand and we don't have enough time to understand it. Um, and we just have to rely upon the experts that have been in that industry that have uh, kind of wrote the book on, on those types of things. And, uh, and, and we can still thrive and succeed day to day without having to, to understand those true inner workings. So uh, just you know, basically don't, don't try to let that be a detriment to whether or not you want to continue programming or not. Like um, I, would have, I would avoid all that, that programming theory and everything um, if, it, if it's bothering you right now. Um, I'm curious, you know, with this guy, like specifically, what, what was he working on, and, and, and specifically, what what algorithms, what what architectural patterns and things what was he trying to follow? Uh, that he's then trying to, you know, to fully understand to the point where he's trying to, you know, expand upon it or come up with his own architectural patterns. That only comes through through just you know sheer repetition, through trial and error, through a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of coding, man. That's the only way. Just just code code as much as you can. Uh, I would imagine that. If you can do that, if you just code, man, you'll be fine. All right, take care, guys. Bye.